And I really miss them dearly. We were really close friends and we had so many plans of things we were going to do, both together and as a threesome. Uh, when I say a threesome, I don't mean that. And, um, <laughs> uh, but um, <laughs> the uh, truth of the matter is we never got around to it. We had all these plans, we had loads of meetings, we had lots of ideas what to do. The closest we came was um, John did his last performance uh, with me at uh, the Royal Albert Hall with a piece um, and then we planned to go straight in the studio. Keith was meant to be there on that on that particular day but his hands had given way and he just couldn't couldn't do it. And we sort of all realised, hold on a minute, we should have done this. And, and sort of a big lesson, don't, you know, don't wait for something that happens because tomorrow might not, not actually ever happen. Uh, so sadly, we never did all the things that we planned, which was um, very heartbreaking in many respects. But um, they were great fun people. I mean, John had a wicked sense of humour, and so did Keith. Uh, and this is this is a real true story. That um, about ten years ago now, they started the Prog Rock Awards in the UK, and uh, they were great. And the very first one they did was at a place called Kew Gardens, which is just outside of London beautiful botanical gardens owned by the Queen where they, it's claimed they have every species of plant uh, that, in there that there, there is in the world. Um, amazing place if you ever go to London. It's well worth just taking a little trip out and going to Kew Gardens. It's beautiful. And they held the first event there in the evening. Um, and because it wasn't, they weren't used to holding events there, um, because people went during the day, obviously. Uh, and all the toilet facilities, for example, were outside. There was very little inside where they had the, uh, the, the, the big reception area, which is where we're going to hold the Pro Rock Awards. Uh, and in fact, the toilet facilities, which were upstairs, there was a ladies' toilet and a men's toilet. The men's toilet was very basic, had six, six sort of traps to pee in and only two cubicles for, you know, if you ever needed a, a slightly more time sitting down. Um, I don't know what the ladies were like, because you couldn't see very clearly through the keyhole. It was very blurred <laughs> to the one side. Um, anyway, I decided, I thought, hold on a minute, after, the, uh, after like the eight course meal and all that rubbish, I thought, you know, everybody's going to be making a rush for the loo before they do the presentation of the awards. Therefore, when they serve the coffee, I'm going up there, I'm going to get out of the way. Otherwise, it's going to be queuing. It's like most people of my age, a weak bladder, so I thought I ain't going to hang around. So I came to the coffee and, and up I went into the, in the, nobody there, great. So I go into one and I start having a wee and a voice said, who's that? And I looked around and I went, I recognise that voice, Keith. He went, is that you, Rick? And I went, yeah. I said, where are you? He said, I'm locked in one of the, one of the cubicles. He said, I can't get the door to open, it's jammed. Uh, he said, come and give it a yank. Will anybody else in? I went, no, we can't. I went over and got hold of him, started trying to put in, he's pushing, nothing. Wouldn't move, wouldn't move an inch. Uh, he said, what are we going to do? I said, well, I'm going to get some maintenance people. He said, no, you can't do that. I said, I'll tell you what, I'll go in the cubicle next to yours, I'll climb on the seat, I'll climb over in with you, and we'll huddle up together and we'll force the door open. He said, brilliant. So I did. I went in the next door, climbed on the seat, climbed over the top. And we're, it was only a small inside there, so we're like huddled up close together, holding it, and, and yanking and bashing this door. And eventually it burst open, and the place was full. <laughs> and, uh, and we're in there holding each other. And, and John Law was having a wee, and he just looked around and went, Well, now there's a surprise. <laughs> and, uh, and the story did the rounds around the UK, I'll tell you, you know. And people used to say to me, how's Rachel? I go, oh, she's really good. And they went, and Keith? Uh, anyway, I play unashamedly a piece, especially for Keith and John. Uh, and it's a piece I wrote back in 1982, I think it was. But it's just, I can close my eyes and have great memories of these two guys. Uh, this is Gone But Not Forgotten.